OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Good morning. We're glad you're here today. My name is Michelle Delay. I'm the resource teacher here at Sweetwater. And uh, we're here today to talk about learning upgrade. Wonderful resource for your students. We've used it for years and years and years, 12 years. We were in a pilot project. Uh, But to start, I'd like to introduce you to our panel members who will be sharing out some of their experiences with their students. So we have Kevin Leonard, who is currently our job developer instructor. Um, however, he has used Learning Upgrade for many years with his ESL students. And he is now our resident, I call him our resident expert with learning upgrade. Whenever we have a new teacher come on board, we always have them go to Kevin. He has a wealth of information about the inner working with how to add students and teachers and answer for things like that. So he's our resident. Another resident expert is Steve Alvarado. He's our math instructor at Montgomery Adult School. He's been using learning for quite a long time. And we're around there. So he's here to tell you about the power of the resource for his students and um, share his personal experience using it. He is our resident now. Put it that way. And many other things. <laughs> And last but not least, I'd like to introduce our uh, Learning Upgrade creator, founder, CEO. We're so honored to have him here. We've worked with the Node Lobo, is our Learning Upgrade um, friend, and we've been in partnership for 12 years with the Node. So he's been wonderful, a wonderful resource to us and we're so glad he's here to talk to us today about learning upgrade. Okay. 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 Perfect. Uh, and I'm I'm close right now. Okay. So <laughs> hi everyone out there. Uh, so learning upgrade based in San Diego and the idea of using smartphones to help uh, adult ed teachers to reach students and to get a lot faster uh, learning, a lot more effective learning, started right here. We are part of the XPRIZE competition and Sweetwater was our partner and all the pioneering work we did with smartphones and adult ed was all done here on this campus and in Sweetwater. So uh, it feels like coming home <laughs> to come over here and talk to all, all of these guys that I've worked with for eight now. But the big, uh, I'm going to share my screen right now to just show you a little bit um, of what we did in the early days. There we go. All right, share sound. Okay, all right. So, um, I'm going to show you a little video. The first work we ever did with a class anywhere in the world with smartphones was Lisa Sharman's class at, was it Montgomery or? It was uh, an offsite yeah, off campus. Off-site campus. Satellite. Uh, there was 20, 20 adults at an elementary school whose kids were going to that elementary school. And they were doing ESL with Lisa. So I want to show you a video of that very first class four years ago. So. This I got. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Lisa Sharman, and I am an ESL instructor for Sweetwater Adult Education in Chula Vista, California. I teach at an elementary campus parents of students that attend the elementary school. So after attending the Learning Upgrade workshop, I quickly went back to class and shared what this app that I um, really liked and enjoyed when I went to the in-service. I asked the students to, um, if they had a smartphone, to get their phone out and um, download the app from the store. And it's free, so they were very excited about that. And the lessons are high interest lessons that have songs and uh, music videos. They went home and in the next few days, they were uh, hooked and very excited about this program. So much so that I, when I would log in to check the reports on my students, they were, um, they were logging hours like crazy. I am Abril Parra, and i um, using a learn, learning upgrade. Uh, sometimes I use it while I while, while wait for, for my doctor's appointment, my dentist's appointment, and sometimes I use it in the evening when my child are working in his homework. Um, and basically I'm right now in the 51 exercise and I really like it. I really, it, I think it, it's, it helps you a lot. Uh, for me, it helps me for the nouns because I was kind of having trouble with that. And I think it's, it's very helpful. So yes, yeah, so right here is the, the login. And I just put my password. It's really easy, it's really short. Um, just log in and just press right there. The level that you're in, right here. Look at this passage. I'm using an other place uh, with the, um, the same the bus. Um, I'm learning, I'm studying the bus. Um, for me, it's very practical because I don't need books. I don't need pencil and only my phone and I'm studying. Mm. It's very, very practical for me. El, el programa de Learning Off es muy bueno para mí. Um, siento que estoy aprendiendo mucho. Um, uh, me gusta porque es muy fácil de estudiar. Uh, lo estudio como voy mucho al doctor con mi niño. Um, Estudio mucho en el, en el espacio de que él está con el doctor o cuando vengo en el bus, este, vengo estudiando, es fácil de entrar, lo traigo en mi teléfono. La música y los sonidos son muy buenos. Uh, a mí me gusta mucho porque te motiva, te motiva a seguir, a seguir y estás o sea, moviéndote, pero a la vez estás aprendiendo y, y, este, y escuchando, aprendiendo y moviéndote, o sea, es muy bueno. Okay, so if, if you didn't, yeah. We need some feedback from our distance okay. audience that the further away we are from the camera, it, they actually can hear us better. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. We won't get too close there. Okay. <laughs> and if, 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 <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you, if, for, for those of you who couldn't see the caption, she was saying that uh, her son goes to the doctor a lot. And so she uses Learning Upgrade while waiting in the doctor's office, and she likes the music and is fun. Um, so what we found out in that first thing, first usage is now gone all over the world. 20 countries using this smartphone model with WhatsApp groups and, and different things like that. But what we learned is we used to come here in the computer lab with Kevin and uh, work with adult learners here you know, on this campus. And they used to do an average of 30 minutes a week. As soon as we introduced smartphones, it went up to two hours a week. So we got 4x time on task just by moving from the computers and the lab to smartphones. But the really fascinating thing about Sweetwater was we did a data analysis in the first year and found out that 70% of time on task was between eight at night and two in the morning, okay? <laughs> between eight at night and two in the morning. And we were all flabbergasted. We said, what, what is going on? Well, give the kids dinner, 
put the kids to bed. And then the time that normally would have been spent on YouTube videos or TikTok or social media or is now spent on learning upgrade. 10 minutes. Oh, I'll just do one more lesson. Oh, well, I'll do one more lesson. So that's where we come up, came up with the word binge learning. Like Netflix, <laughs> binge learning because of the music and fun and everything. So what we found out in Sweetwater is they were doing two to four lessons a day, two to six hours a week, finishing courses in three months that they used to take a year. So every three months, one NRS level, which is astonishing when you think about the normal pace people, people do this. Um, and then we also found out that CASAS scores were going up in short amount of time. Uh, basically 7.8 point growth in students 210 or below on CASAS in 10 weeks because they were spending so much time on task, you know, on the phones in addition to the instruction. Um, so what I wanted to do, I'll stop sharing this, is go through our panel because um, everyone here has spent at least you know, eight years working on um, learning upgrade and has seen the computer times in the old days and the smartphone times in the new days. Okay, so Michelle, do you want to come up here? Or... Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I'm, I'm going to have three of you fully introduce yourselves and what you do here. I just have a question on mine about, could they get the presentation emailed to them or sure. linked in the chat? Yeah. Okay, we'll do the email. Thank you. So go ahead and introduce yourself. That's right here. Sorry, okay. Michelle. <laughs> I'm Michelle Dulay. I'm a resource teacher here at the site for Sweetwater. And I've been a resource teacher for about 11 or 12 years. Uh, I was a former ESL teacher, high school diploma, independent study, a little bit of ABE. So I have some experience in different program areas over the years prior to becoming a resource teacher. So I'm happy to be here to, uh, with our friend Vinod. Um, we've loved working with Learning Upgrade. It's been a resource that we've had every year. God bless you. Every year since, uh, you know, we started 12 years ago, 11, 12 years ago. And so it's been a long relationship and a positive one for our teachers, for our students. And um, I'm going to look forward to our resident math expert. Well, good morning. My name is Steve Alvarado. I'm the math teacher at Montgomery Adult School. Uh, let's see, this is my 23rd year teaching and about my eighth year teaching math exclusively. So I like using Learning Upgrade in the classroom. Um, it, I always call Learning Upgrade my, my teacher's assistant. So I will give the students a password. Um, I'll explain to them that they're going to be um, probably wanting some headphones. The first time that you hear Learning Upgrade, it's, it's kind of a shock, right? <laughs> With the music and everything. And, and uh, I'll just quote one of, the, one of the most interesting comments I've heard about from a student is that the, uh, the wonderfully annoying music is very helpful. <laughs> and because the, you know they'll break into song sometimes you know the class but embarrassingly because they they have it you know in their head program so anyway so i'll explain to them that the math is going to be uh, the learning upgrade is my assistant and that uh, they can definitely reinforce their math skills uh, with the the program um i'll share a couple scripts uh, one is uh as I'm teaching algebra, for example, if those students are trying to pass their GD test uh, or high set test, one of the areas that I found that uh, Learning Upgrade does a much better job than I do with explaining is on what is a function. And so on the GD test, uh, the questions can be uh, presented in a, a table, it can be presented in coordinate uh, pairs, it can be presented in a graph. And so I always redirect students who are getting ready to take the test to uh, log into your learning upgrade. And I believe it's uh, lesson 35 <laughs> in the uh, it's, it's my teacher's assistant. And uh, and so the nice thing about the, the 10 minutes or so of this uh, of this lesson is that it very clearly better than I can uh, show what is a function. 
because of the um, animation, the music, and the different um, variations between the table, the graphs, or the, the ordered pairs, a student can really get a better grasp on how to identify what is a function versus what is not a function versus what I would do in the classroom lecture. So that's the one lesson that stands up that really, really helps me um, reinforce the skills. So with learning upgrade, the student is able to work on rigor. They're able to work on these individual skills that will that make my job a lot easier because as I'm uh, presenting my learning intentions in class and I'm, and I'm helping them with the pair of whatever tests that they're gonna take, um, many of the questions are multi-layered and learning upgrade does a very, very nice job with actually teaching them the individual skills that help them have better success on the test. Um, one thing that I've always shared with my with my class is that I can I can teach you pretty much anything in math, but the one thing that I've never been able to figure out is how to teach you your multiplication tables. If somehow I could uh, get the the monopoly on that, I, I think I would uh, hit the lottery. So, so I have this one individual that I can remember, a forty something year old woman who was coming to my night class, and uh, she struggled in math. And one of the areas that I realized is that her, her multiplication skills were, were poor. And so again, I told her that you know the only way I've learned to teach you your multiplication skills is you really have to come up with note cards or some type of system to just memorize patterns uh, to learn your multiplication tables. So she was frustrated because she was trying to get a job advancement and she needed her GD. So I put her on, I want to say like level three, level four multiplications, which again, you know, it's a very low level. And this is a 40 something year old person. So, you know, it could be very humbling. So, so she started uh, learning her multiplication tables on her own. And uh, about three or four weeks later, she comes into my class that night and she says, hey, I just want to share with you that, um, you know, I've been successful. Oh, wow. I'm thinking that, you know, she's able to answer a couple questions. Uh, and she was able to show me that she knows her multiplication tables from one through nine. What pill did you take? <laughs> and, and she said it was the learning upgrade. So she was able to learn her multiplication tables, which then unlocked her brain for you know fractions and, and just functions and patterns and things like that. But I think more importantly than that is that it gave her confidence and it gave her um, the... Uh, the the knowledge that you know what I've overcome a fear that I had probably in elementary school, and then she later went on a couple months later to take in her last test and she graduated, and then she went on to you know bigger and better things. But the the learning upgrade was definitely able to help her and, and help me as a teacher to overcome that that foundation that was essential. That without that, nothing else was going to make sense, or it was going to make sense. It was going to take her three or four times the time because the numbers were not going to make any sense. So those are, those are a couple of stories. That and I, I, and I, think, I think Steve, one, I mean, one neat thing about that story is again, roll back to five years earlier with the computer labs and all that. Uh, and without that, her being able to go home and bang on her smartphone and figure those tables out, there's an embarrassment factor. Absolutely. You know, are you going to sit in a computer lab and do two times two is four? with other people be sitting right behind you, you know, at home curled up in bed. And of course, after your kids are far away and you're curled up in bed and privately working on your time tables, mm -hmm. right? I think that's part of the attraction of smartphones. A, you can work at home and we know for equity, a lot of low-income people do not have computers and Wi-Fi at home, right? 30% of the population, the only internet they have is from their home. So um, that's one thing. But the other thing people sometimes don't think about is the privacy. Being able to curl up in your bed and do ABCs, one, two, threes, basic, basic stuff. And usually what stops you in GED, from what I've heard from all the instructors, it's not the GED work, right? It's the six, seven years of math you need before GED to do basics. So it's fractions and it's yeah. negative numbers and it's multiplication tables, right? Um, Kevin, um, you've been sort of at the forefront of training teachers mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. smartphone onboarding. Yes. There's, there's, a, there's a real art and magic sort of to getting adults to use their smartphones and to get onboarded and get going. So can you talk about that? 
Yeah, so um, I've been teaching for 27 years, uh, GED distance learning, citizenship for 10 years on Saturday mornings, ESL, high school subjects, independent studies. Uh, I also have administrative access, which means I train the teachers who need new training and simple things. Hey, I forgot my password. Teach them how to enroll students in learning upgrade, how to assign the courses. Uh, basically any kind of support they need with learning upgrade. I was the distance learning teacher at Montgomery Adult School, and at that time, uh, teachers would rotate their classes into our distance learning lab. And there were multiple programs that the students could use, and they would use the learning upgrade. The, one of the problems was back then, in addition to what Vinod just mentioned, was we had Wi-Fi issues. So you'd be sitting there on the computer, we'd go through updates or no Wi-Fi and it was terrible and the students would get frustrated. So another plus for trying to onboard the, the usage on the cell phones. I um, show, help students download the program on their phones, show the teachers, show the teachers how to use the programs, get them acclimated with the program and, and promote the bin usage also so they get in the habit of using it. One of our teachers would say she would just have her students use Learning Upgrade for about the first 10 minutes of class every day until all the students came to class and then go ahead and start with uh, whatever her daily learning targets were for that particular day, whatever, whatever her lessons were for that day, but have them use the Learning Upgrade, which is good because it helps the students get a little more acclimated to the program. Uh, looking at learning upgrade, in addition to the ESL and the math, I mean, there's financial literacy, there's digital literacy. The teacher you just saw in the video, Lisa, she happens to be at this campus. I was just talking to her two days ago. She is the digital literacy teacher for Chula Vista Adult School. Each of our four adult schools have a digital literacy teacher from one to two every afternoon, Monday through Thursday. She just used the, the email lesson in the digital literacy course, and she's going to explore about more of what the students need to do. And what's great about it is they don't have to go in order. The teacher can decide, you know, what do I want to cover today? What do the students want to do? Maybe I'll ask the students, hey, look at the activities. What do you want to learn today? What do you want me to cover today? We've had teachers who have used the, uh, uh, the reading and comprehension and uh, maybe the higher level, level five, for the main idea, just going over the main idea where the students don't necessarily have to use the program that particular day, but the teacher can cover that activity and the students can kind of go over it with that teacher. Uh, as a job developer, I visit each of our four schools a uh, different day of the week. I'm in a different school. We have four adult schools and I'm collaborating with our CTE teachers. And there's actually a course now after visiting the classes that I'm going to promote where our CTE students and anyone else who's interested can, can do that course for getting ready for a job. There's resume writing, all kinds of things, just exactly what I do every day of the week. So there's a, we hear the word diversity. There's a lot of diversity in learning upgrade for, for all the students at each of our four schools. That one question. Um, can we have a teacher account in order to explore learning upgrade? Is there a yes. Uh, so I'm going to go over it a little bit later, but mm -hmm. anyone who goes to learningupgrade.com and clicks pilot requests at the top can, um, if you go to learningupgrade.com and click pilot request and fill in that form, make sure you click on OTAN at the bottom so you get an OTAN pilot because OTAN is actually tracking all the California pilots of OTAN members. Uh, and uh, OTAN on their website has a curriculum partners uh, site. So you can go on and search for OTAN curriculum offers and get it that way. Or you can go to learningupgrade.com and click pilot and do it that way. You'll get a three month pilot for unlimited number of students and uh, also the teacher account to do the teacher lessons that Kevin was talking about on your smart board. <laughs> so if you want to do lessons, whole class too, you'll get all that. There's a bunch of questions. You want to oh. go now or do you want to wait till the end or how do you want to? Uh, go, go ahead. Take them as we go. Okay. Uh, the next one is what does learning upgrade log look like on the smartphone? 
learning upgrade. What does the learning upgrade log look like on the smartphone? Login. Or Maybe or, that's what she Yeah. Means. Oh, logo. Oh, logo? Logo? Just just like, oh, the black arrow. And, download the right app. Oh, yeah. she just cracked her logo. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a black with a white arrow. Okay, black circle. Black circle, white arrow. That's the icon. Uh, yeah. Next one is, does this program have anything for EL Civics? Yes, so um, our, we have in digital literacy, there's a lot of sort of civics, but in the new citizenship course, there's a lot more. <laughs> so uh, um, if she's talking about the, the uh, civics for the citizenship test, that's in the citizenship course. And if she's talking about a general civics, then we have it in uh, the GED reading course and also the work life skills course. So, yeah. Okay, and then next one is the uh, app is accessible also on a computer and a tablet, not just the phone, right? Right. So you can use it on a web browser, on a Chromebook or Mac or PC. You can use it as an app on an Android or iPad, and then you can use it as an app on an iPhone or Android. Yeah. yeah. And people go back and forth. Sometimes they use it in a computer lab in the morning and a phone at night. And I, I don't know, you guys have looked at that data, but when you pull up the time on task for a student, it'll say, oh, they at eight at night, they played this lesson, got this score on their Android phone. And then at 10 in the morning, they played on a Windows computer. And I like that because then you can track, oh, they're using a smartphone at night and computer lab in the day. You know, it's nice to track that. Fine. There's yeah. the next question right there on the board. What is the website to access it on the computer? Oh, uh, learningupgrade.com. Learningupgrade.com. Thank you. Okay. Um, Michelle. Yes. So now you worked a lot with Sweetwater generally at the district level. Yes. Um, what do you think when you're thinking about smartphones and how does it fit in with like the overall adult ed program? You know, how do you think uh, a and I don't just mean smartphones, but a learning platform, you know, mm -hmm. that has data sharing and Excel spreadsheets on the back and all that. But what does the smartphone bring to a program like Sweetwater Adult Ed? It brings quite a bit because not every program has that feature, first of all. And that data piece is so important to be able to access as a teacher and as a you know, as a for admin or anybody who wants to know um, how the program is, you know, making an impact. And it does because as Vinod spotlighted the, the evening times, you can see that as a teacher, you don't necessarily know that they're doing that unless you go into the program, log into the data and be able to see that they're spending that additional time away from class, um, improving, you know, helping, improve their uh, learning. So um, I'm not sure if I'm answering your yeah, question, no, absolutely. but that data piece is really important um, for teacher to look at daily. And there are reports in there where you see the time on task. You see how many um, certificates they've completed. They have the bronze, the silver, and the gold. And it's highly motivating for the student to be able to, to go through those lessons, to reach those certificates, and we celebrate that with them. If they reach the you know bronze level, we'll celebrate it. Uh, a lot of teachers will put up the certificate in their classrooms, displaying that the student has done that. And um, as Vinod said, when they're very tired, working late at night, having that motivational and one more lesson, one more lesson. It's pushing them through, um, giving them what they need, helping building their confidence level, as we discussed, and just overall their experience, learning experience. Just wanted to add about the certificate being in distance learning. I used to, uh, some of them, when they would finish at that particular time, when they got to number 60 in the final challenge, I would print the certificates for them, having the color printer and present it to them right there. In, Front of their, their classmates, it's, it was kind of a motivating factor, you know. It's like, okay, give me the next one, you know, what's the next course, you know. It wasn't a competition type of thing, although you can do that too, but just a, that sense of accomplishment, 
you know, and made them feel good. When you hand out a certificate, everyone else in the class is, I want that mm -hmm. certificate, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And and adult that I used to think when I first started out, you know, we do a lot of K-12 work, but I used to think, oh, the adults are not interested in the certificates. And now I've realized <laughs> it's more than ever. Um, and uh, we have Hanin here who just came back from Africa. We did a launch in, um, in Liberia and she's on a WhatsApp group with a bunch of adult students in Africa, and one just texted out their certificate on the WhatsApp group after only one week on the program. But what does that do to the other 50 students in that WhatsApp group? They're motivated. You know, they're, oh, wow, someone's already got a certificate and I'm only on lesson 10. Oh, I better get going. We have a couple more questions. If you like. Okay. Uh, what's available for a career soft skills class? Okay. Wow. Are these planted <laughs> questions? Or... <laughs> Just read them as they go. And then we uh, have a hand and then another question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Dr. Burke as well. Dr. Burke. Okay. Uh, let's talk about work life skills. We worked for two years on a work life skills course that came out in December. It covers everything from you know teamwork and communication to resume writing to diversity to you know um things like um conflict resolution uh being on time dressing appropriately you know everything and uh, pro literacy created new readers press created a book that goes with it so there's a workbook that goes with it we're hoping people a lot of people are using it already but we're hoping a lot more people use it especially in in um, job transition and getting people ready for work, things like that. Okay, and this, so then we have, let me say, Dr. Burke, mm -hmm. with his hand raised. If he wants to unmute, he can ask. Oh, Dr. Burke, you can Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, I'm out ill, but uh, happy to be here virtually. I just wanted to add to when you asked Michelle that question, from my perspective, which is very much a district level division uh, director's perspective. One of the things I really, really appreciate is the consist consistency of performance. I have never heard of one time where teachers came to me and said, there's this problem with learning upgrade. And we've been using it for six years. And I used it with Cajon Valley, uh, another district, two years prior. So I've been with uh, learning upgrade on some level for eight years and have never heard one problem. Uh, that wow. is outstanding. Um, wow. The other thing I would like to uh, give uh, kudos to you about is your consistency, I mean, your availability, you know. Um, I don't know anyone else at, at your level of an organization has invested uh, in talking directly with the practitioners the way that you do. You invest your time in us, you invest your time in students, and obviously in your in your product, and your accessibility is just uh, is incredible. So thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. I mean, we're based here in San Diego, and I've sat in Dr. Burke's office with these guys many times, and we just say, okay, how are we going to solve this problem? <laughs> or how are we going to uh, roll this out? And when we just came with this crazy idea that we were going to teach on smartphones, Dr. Burke, and these guys were open to it. At the time, no one, no one was thinking smartphones and adult dad. I mean, what? You can fit paragraphs and things on a phone. I mean, everyone was so skeptical about it. You can learn algebra on a phone. That's ridiculous, right? And these guys were actually open to let's try some crazy stuff down here. And a lot of other people in San Diego were not. So, uh, so it's, it's been really fun. But this stuff is not easy. You have to be willing to fail a little bit. You have to be willing to go on an adventure. Um, and I remember in Lisa's class, we enrolled the first day. They said, everyone pull out your phones, right? Everyone pull out your phones and we're gonna load learning upgrade on. Guess what the first roadblock we ran into? No one had thought about this, okay? First roadblock. Um, oh, I don't know my Google Play password. My spouse knows it or my child knows it. It turns out very few adults know their password for installing an app on their phone. So guess what our new best practices was right after that, right after Lisa Sherman's class, we said to everyone, tomorrow, we are going to onboard you on learning upgrade. So tonight, will you please go home and install learning upgrade and whoever has the password and so come in tomorrow with it ready to go. 
See, we didn't know that. We didn't know people don't know their passwords, right? Little things like that. And then Lisa told me right after that, um, well, two people were not able to participate because they didn't have smartphones. And this was four, four or five years ago. And the funny thing that happened is four weeks later, I came to campus to make that video that you just saw. And she pulls me aside and she says, you know, those two, they got smartphones. <laughs> okay. She's just smiling at me. They got smartphones. In other words, they're not going to be the only two people in the class without it. They figured it out. You know, they got smartphones now. <laughs> so that just shows you kind of the, the motivation, right? Not to be the one left out. I want to turn to outcomes because we, we spend a lot of time with Steve on the GEB side, helping people get their diplomas. And as you all know, what's the number one reason people don't get a GED? It's math, right? I think 80 or 90% of the failure is math. And Steve's job is to get them to pass math. I know you have some stories. Yeah, definitely. So a uh, few years ago, I had a student, uh, an inherited student who had passed everything except for math. And uh, this person had come to me, had already taken and failed the math GED three or four times. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to figure out, you know, a way to not repeat the same mistakes and, and see what was what was not uh, clicking. And so as I assessed him, as I was, you know, up on the board teaching math, I realized that he was completely disconnected. Uh, during the time that I would let the students work individually or in small groups, he would stare at his as paper, you know, and a couple of times I would try to approach him and, hey, do you need any help? Or, no, no, I'm just going to wait for you to, you know, explain. And so, you know, a couple weeks later, it's it's not, nothing is sinking. And so um, I, I came to Vinod and the team and uh, they gave me some ideas. So I put him on learning upgrade, gave him some, uh, some homework assignments and said, you know what, I want you to work on these things. And uh, I guess one of the missing pieces was that that interaction with, the the app um he worked better with the music with the animation uh with the structure and i started noticing that he was working a lot outside of classroom so his although his uh although his behavior <laughs> or his his learning uh or lack of in my class hadn't changed he was just watching me uh teach and i was hoping that it was you know he was retaining it I was seeing that he was actually putting in the time uh, at home on the learning upgrade. And then sure enough, uh, gave him a couple of assessments and wow, your, your skills have really improved um, so much to where he finally, uh, his goal was to go to community college, get his GD of course. Um, and a few months later, he is telling me, I just signed up for the math GD test. Wow, okay, let's, <laughs> let's see what happens. And then he, he passed. And then he enrolled in community college. And then again, he went on to, you know, the next part of his, uh, of his academic uh, goals. So it definitely helped um, bridge the gaps that I was unable to uh, connect with, uh, with him during class. And he was able to find the resources that he needed to successfully learn what he needed to Pass the test and graduate. I, I remember talking to him because we made a video. Is it the one we, yeah, we, I remember talking to him and he said a lot of his work was all night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he had a day job and he used to work like, we're talking one, two, three, four in the morning on, <laughs> on math. <laughs> and I think his thing was doing hundreds of problems, right? He just had to, he just, like you said, he had to put the work in. Mm -hmm. He had to just do hundreds and hundreds of problems and then it, boom. Mm -hmm. But he got, I remember on the high side, he got two, five, five. And so he was getting discouraged because he needed an eight. So when you get two, five, and five, and you're pretty far, then you're getting ready to just, I'm going to give up, right? That's right yeah, yeah. And then it's like, so he got a 10 yeah. on the next test. So he went from five to 10. Question. So what I'm hearing from you is that this effectively addresses one of the toughest things for teachers to do is to differentiate instruction, to allow students to learn in the ways that they can learn best and to be able to individuate that. It sounds like in, in be able to do this like on demand, wherever they are, 
And that's just meeting such a critical need. And I love the fact that you built it from the phone up. So uh, amazing. Yeah. But, uh, it's really hard if you if you do everything web-based, it's really hard on the phone. You know, all of you have done web-based online learning on the phone. It's a disaster. Everything scrolls off and nothing fits or it's tiny text or something. Because we were part of this XPRIZE competition and we had to create an app, thank God. And it had to work on very low-end Android phones. So we went out to Walmart and we bought all the $50 phones and all our lessons had to work on a $50 phone in, you know, and that was a great discipline because now that we're in Africa, you know, you can't tell someone, oh, you need a, you know, Samsung Galaxy or an <laughs> iPhone, you know, and so now this is paying off. But the fact of the matter is we're smartphones, um, we're in a two-tier society, like it or not. You know, there's one group of people using $800,000 iPhones. And there's another group of people using $50 Walmart prepaid phones. And uh, the two don't know it, don't know, you know, and they're an all Android phones, almost all of them. And they're passed from person to person. They're often refurbished. And if you don't work on those, you've just cut out, you know, if you don't work on those low end Android phones, you just cut out most of the low income population. My question is, um, and I haven't, I don't think I've heard this presented yet. What kinds of uh, accessibility features do you have to augment your diversity and inclusion and equity? Yeah. Well, we've had to recently do a lot on this. And I think some of you might have seen some of this, but we just had to go through 2,500 videos with closed captioning in English, Spanish, and Arabic. Um, we've had to uh, change. Um, the way we do the lessons, we've had to do a lot uh, because obviously you want to be available to everyone. And from the beginning, we we were appealing always to a diverse group. And I think it's because of the music and the video and the format. Um, but in terms of accessibility, um, some of it works great just because of the phone, the touchscreen, all that. But other things like closed captioning, or um, colorblindness work, you know, we've had to do a lot of hard work. And <laughs> you can imagine with all the crazy animation and all we do, we've had to do a lot of hard work and there's still a long way to go. You're never there with accessibility. It's a journey, but it's starting, it, you know, I feel like we're going in the right direction. And um, we've also, and, and this, I think Kevin and, and Steve would have seen this, but, What's pretty obvious in adult ed that people don't talk about a lot is um, that special needs, you know, is 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 a pretty high percentage uh, in, and you need to be able to address dyslexia, learning difficulties, and um, autism, and various things that are going to stop you from learning, and dyscalculia on the math side, and we've spent years on that. How do you overcome that? with music, with animation, with games, with voice, always talking. Don't just put text up, just talk. We record 10,000 pieces of dialogue per course. So it's a conversation. Um, so I think special need is another sort of thing that people don't talk a lot about in adult ed. Sorry, there's one more question on the chat. Um, do you have part of, as part of your presentation to do a demonstration of the app? We don't here, but if you, go to learningupgrade.com. There's a bunch of videos there, but the best demonstration is hit pilot request and <laughs> we send you a pilot and we send you a pilot and then you can immediately start banging on the lessons. And I think what every teacher has always done is put themselves as one of the students <laughs> and start playing the mm -hmm. lessons or do the teacher whiteboard and then you can play it. If you do the teacher whiteboard, you can jump around play any lesson you want. How's it going? I actually um, saw you speak at the CCA in San Diego some years ago, uh, and we did a pilot, um, and it was good, actually. I, I'll say as, as an instructor, the math is really the value. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff in there, but for GE you guys have been talking about this, but it really does, especially when they're coming in low costs, I would just require them to download the Living Upgrade app 
Um, can you talk about because we the, with the pandemic we kind of lost track of it. Like yeah. you and I had emailed a couple of times. Um, and can you talk about cost structure in terms of like how many licenses? Like we had an email going and like you yeah. get like a certain number. Yeah, you can. I mean. What you guys can do is just email me. I mean, learning upgrade just costs X per student. It's per student. So it's not like you buy a hundred or you know, whatever number. It's just per cost. student. Yeah. And there's no training or all everything's included, but it's just cost per student and it's lower than anything else that you can buy. And then so like just follow up question on that cost per student. So let's say we're like we have an account. And then every time we add a student, we're like getting going. Like we, as we lose, like let's say so usually you buy a certain amount of licenses, and so then and then okay, I want fifty of these things. Yeah. And then all right, hey, can I get five more? Like that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. And we're, I mean, like I said, we're local and we're kind of from California, and we're not. We're just. I think these these guys know it's more of a partnership to try to help people. So we're not really strict on all that stuff. If you need five more, you get five more. Okay. And we don't, yeah. I mean, Hanina and I and Drew are the team that works with the all of you in California, and everyone's just trying to roll their sleeves up and help people learn, help people make a big break too. That's what we're trying to do. I'll, I'll tell you, these guys here, I, what I told them right before we went on today is that we are helping people in Africa learn to read. And there's 300,000 people in San Diego County that read third grade level or below. So I told them that we all just need to work harder uh, and be more creative. If we can help people in Africa, then we can help people in, in Los Angeles, right? And in Bay Area and here in our hometown in San Diego. It takes some work, you know? It takes a partnership. Everyone has to roll up their sleeves and figure out smartphones and and adult ed and every, everyone has to just work together. Um, it's not easy to change, it's not easy to try something new. If you've always taught the same way and you're threatened by smartphones and technology and mobile, it's not easy. But all I can say is these guys, you know, done it. And um, Sweetwater is sort of the, the lead on this whole thing. And I just feel like, uh, there's so many more people we need to help on GED, on ESL, on, uh, you know, job training that it's, it's like, how do we scale up? I know we're out of time. It's just yeah. how, how, what we're always wondering is how do we scale up? I just want to spotlight. We've been talking about how it helps the student, but sometimes we also have to turn the other side and say, well, how does that help a teacher? Yeah. You know, so uh, I want to just want to spotlight some things that, that, uh, that this program helps with, with teachers. So if you're a distance learning teacher, like I am, um, and you're trying to figure out how to account for uh, maybe uh, attendance or uh, how much work have they done, if you're a program that has to you know, monitor the hours of instruction or hours of work um, for, for pops and things like that, Learning Upgrade has all sorts of graphics and all sorts of, uh, of accounting pieces that will allow the, the teacher or the program that you work for to track how many hours a student's working. So as a distance learning teacher, when TOPS comes, and of course I'm trying to figure out how many hours of instruction that I did, am I actually going to put in, um, I can go on to Learning Upgrade and I can see how many hours that they have actually been working and I can use that. Um, I've had a couple of students in the past, uh, things that you don't think about. A student comes to me, they're on, uh, probation and they have uh, some strict requirements through their um, probation or parole officer and they're concerned because they've got to you know meet 20 hours a week of instruction and we're going on spring break and they're afraid that that may lead to them going back to where they came from <laughs> <laughs> this is not so learning upgrade friendly so, <laughs> the wi-fi system might not work as well yeah yeah so so, so the uh, the creative way to work around that is that you know, if you have a registrar or how, whoever is in charge of filling out these forms that they need to submit to their to their worker, uh, you, you, we, you can definitely use Learning Upgrade as a, as a means to, to track that they've actually, um, you know, worked for this amount of hours. Or if you are on uh, public assistance and the social worker is requiring that you have X amount, but we're about to go on winter break for four weeks. 
how am I going to get my benefits? Yeah. So you can come up with a, a goal mm -hmm. and you can say, okay, I, I need you to work X amount and I'm going to be able to track it. And uh, learning upgrade allows for those pieces, those, those uh, individual cases that may not uh, be like everybody else's, yeah. but if you need some accountability, if you need to track progress, if you need to track hours of, of work, the system is built in learning upgrade to allow for the teacher and the, the, the administration to actually. No, that's great. That. That's a that's a good way to close. Um, what Sweetwater and other schools do is when they enroll students, they use a spreadsheet that has their student ID for Sweetwater along with their names. Then when we export those, when the teachers export those spreadsheets, so the administration they join them with your tops and other data, and then you can have data that's joined to your other, and it can filter in, and we're getting better at that kind of integration. Uh, we're out of time. I want to thank Michelle, Steve, and Kevin for coming here on a Saturday and sharing their time, and uh, uh, thank everyone online for joining, and all those really good questions, and Dr. Burke, who I really didn't expect to yeah. join. Fantastic. Uh, and thank you, Vinod, for being here. Oh, yeah. And as you said, it's a team effort. You've always been in there rolling up your sleeves along with us. So we appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you much.